British farmers have had enough. For years, they've put up with endless regulations, rising costs, and the feeling that no one in Westminster really gives a toss about them. But now, now they're done. The proposed changes to inheritance tax by Keir Starmer's Labour Party have pushed them to the edge. This isn't just about money or land. It's about survival. These farms aren't just businesses, they're family legacies, handed down through generations. Labour's plan, which could force many families to sell off chunks of their land to pay the tax bill, feels like the final betrayal. It's not like this frustration has come out of nowhere. Farmers have been warning for years that their industry is being strangled by endless red tape and policies made by people who've probably never stepped foot in a muddy field. Environmental targets that ignore practical realities, skyrocketing costs for things like feed and fuel, and now this inheritance tax debacle. It's all adding up to a perfect storm. Farmers aren't just angry, they're terrified. If these changes go through, what's stopping Britain from losing even more of its farming heritage? So on December 11th, they're heading to London. Tractors will roll through the streets as a very literal wake-up call to the politicians who, from their cushy urban offices, seem oblivious to the crisis unfolding in the countryside. This isn't just a protest, it's a desperate cry for help. Farmers don't want handouts. They want policies that actually work for them, not against them. But the thing is, this isn't just about inheritance tax, is it? It's about years of feeling overlooked and undervalued. When was the last time farming got real attention from the government? Not just the buzzwords about sustainability and green revolutions, but actual support that helps farmers stay afloat. Because right now, they're drowning. Every year, more farms go under. Every year, more families give up on the dream. And every year, Britain becomes more dependent on imported food. Something that should worry everyone, not just the farmers. What's really infuriating, though, is the sheer irony of it all. Labour claims to stand for the working class, for families, for tradition. But what's more working class than a farmer? What's more family-oriented than a farm that's been in the same hands for centuries? And what's more traditional than British farming itself? By alienating farmers, Labour isn't just betraying them. It's betraying its own supposed values. If labor doesn't change course, they're going to find themselves at the wrong end of a serious backlash. Farmers aren't just going to sit quietly while their livelihoods are ripped apart, and they shouldn't have to. Farming isn't just another industry, it's the backbone of this country. It's the food on our plates and the green fields that define Britain's landscape. Ignore it at your peril. So when those tractors hit London, you'd better believe it's going to make a statement. And hopefully, it's one that finally gets through to the people in power. Because if something doesn't change soon, the damage to Britain's farming heritage and its future could be irreversible. The government's latest budget has sent shockwaves through the countryside. Inherited agricultural assets worth over £1 million are now set to face a 20% inheritance tax, IHT. And while officials downplay the impact, claiming it'll only hit around 500 farms, farmers aren't buying it. Farming groups are calling foul, arguing the number is way higher, and the consequences far worse than the government lets on. Liz Webster, the founder of Save British Farming, didn't hold back, branding the move a betrayal. We've had enough of lies. These changes aren't just numbers on paper. They're the death knell for thousands of family farms, she said. And she's not wrong. For generations, farmers have leaned on exemptions to keep their land and businesses alive, handing them down through families without crippling costs. These exemptions weren't just perks, they were lifelines. Now, with those safeguards being stripped away, families are facing the very real prospect of losing everything. That's not just some abstract worry either. Without the land, there's no farm. And without the farm, there's no legacy to pass on. The worst part, it's not just about individual families losing their land. It's about what happens next. Once these farms go under, who's going to swoop in and buy up the land? Corporate giants, that's who. The same big players who care more about profit margins than the heritage or sustainability of British farming. It's like watching the heart of the countryside get carved up and sold to the highest bidder. And it's not just the farmers who'll feel the sting. This move risks consolidating farmland into fewer hands, 
which could have a ripple effect on the entire food supply chain. Locally grown produce. Forget it. Sustainable farming practices. Not on their priority list. It's the kind of short-term thinking that'll come back to bite everyone in the long run. Farmers are right to be furious. They've been working the land for generations, feeding the nation, and now they're being told their legacy isn't worth protecting. It's hard to see this as anything other than a slap in the face to one of the country's most vital industries. But here's the thing, it's not just about the inheritance tax. Farmers argue that they've been on the back foot for years now, and this feels like the final straw. The loss of the basic payment scheme BPS, which was a critical financial support for so many, has hit them hard. Without that lifeline, many farmers are struggling to keep up with rising costs, from fuel to feed, and it's becoming impossible to make ends meet. On top of that, cheap, low-quality imports flooding the market are pushing British produce off the shelves, making it even harder for local farmers to stay afloat. And don't even get started on the red tape. Bureaucratic hurdles that are choking the life out of exports and making it harder for farmers to get their products to market. Liz Webster put it plainly, our greenhouses are closing, our fertilizer plants are gone, and we're importing food grown with practices we wouldn't dare allow here. It's hard to argue with her. How can it be right that we're bringing in food from abroad that's grown using methods we wouldn't accept on our own soil? This isn't just about fairness, it's a fundamental contradiction in policy. It makes you question the government's commitment to food security when they're not protecting homegrown produce from being undercut by lower standard imports. And as if that wasn't enough, global disruptions like storms in Spain and Morocco are wreaking havoc on supply chains, leaving farmers in the UK even more vulnerable. Suddenly the prospect of empty shelves in supermarkets doesn't feel like a far-off worry. It feels like a reality that's getting closer every day. This isn't just about farming. It's about the very security of our food supply. If British farming continues to be neglected, who's going to feed us when the next crisis hits? It's clear, the government needs to wake up and realize that protecting the backbone of our food system is a whole lot more important than making a quick buck from imports. Food security isn't just a farming issue. It's a national crisis waiting to happen. As the UK relies more and more on imports, it's leaving itself open to all sorts of external shocks that could cripple food supplies. Farmers like Liz Webster have been warning for a while now that ignoring our own agricultural sector is a mistake with far-reaching consequences. This isn't just about us, she says. And she's right. When we can't grow our own food, everyone suffers. Britain, which was once a proud agricultural powerhouse, is at risk of losing its self-sufficiency and the situation in other countries like France and Germany makes this all the more worrying. In places like those, farming is still a big deal. The government there supports and protects its farmers because they understand that farming isn't just about the land. It's about national security. Meanwhile, over here, the lack of real investment and policy support has left our domestic agricultural sector hanging by a thread. If we keep going down this path, we could find ourselves relying on foreign nations for food in a way that makes us vulnerable in times of crisis. At the heart of all this anger is a deep loss of trust between farmers and the government. When Starmer was campaigning during the election, he promised farmer support and stability, a vision of better times ahead. But for many farmers, his leadership has felt like the complete opposite. It's not just incompetence, Liz Webster says. It's deliberate betrayal. Farmers feel like they've been used as pawns in a political game, with policies that focus more on short-term financial gains rather than the long-term health of the industry. One of the most worrying things about these policies is the real possibility that big corporations could start snapping up farmland. Companies like BlackRock have the cash ready to buy land from families who can no longer afford to keep it. If this happens, it could be the end of the traditional family farm, replaced by massive industrial operations focused more on profit than sustainable farming. Critics say this shift isn't just bad for farmers, it could hurt consumers too. With big corporations taking over, we could see food prices rise, quality drop, and less care taken for the environment. It's a scary thought, and one that many farmers are fighting to prevent. What's really getting under farmers' skin is the government's reliance on what many are calling dodgy data. 
The Treasury's numbers on how the inheritance tax changes will affect the sector have been called out as way off the mark. Farmers argue that these figures don't paint a true picture of agricultural life. For example, the government lumps together real farms with what some call faux farms, those weekend getaways owned by rich city folks who barely use them. Liz Webster puts it bluntly, these policies aren't based on truth. They're based on a version of reality that ignores what's actually happening on the ground. It's like the government is making decisions based on a fairy tale, not the struggles farmers are facing every day. The outcome of this showdown is going to be huge. If the government keeps brushing off farmers' concerns, the fallout could be massive, not just for farming but for the whole country. The protest is a wake-up call, not only for politicians but for the public too. As Webster puts it, this is about food on your table. It's about the future of Britain, and we won't back down. At the end of the day, High's downfall is a reminder that politics isn't just about having a solid plan. It's also about character. For High, the lessons from this will probably be hard to swallow. But for everyone watching, it's an opportunity to take note of the importance of accountability, transparency, and keeping your integrity intact while in the public eye. If you found this video interesting, please like, share, and subscribe. Until next time.